Hi, this is Brian Peebles in Michigan, and I've been listening for over a year. When I started listening, I was trying to figure out if starting a PI business was the right next move for me, and the podcast has been instrumental in moving forward with that decision. I appreciate that Matt always seems to ask his guest the exact question that I'm thinking. You know, for a veteran investigator and business owner, Matt has a great ability to think like those of us that are just starting out and ask the questions that we would want to ask. So thanks a lot, Matt. Keep it up. The Campbell Group offers best in the industry pricing, service, and coverage for private investigators. With more than 25 years of experience in the industry and over 3,000 PIs insured nationally, the Campbell team has the expertise to make sure you have the coverage you need. Submit an application and receive a quote within 24 hours. Let them know you're a PI Perspectives listener on your application for $50 off your yearly premium. Are you an investigative professional with an international problem you can't solve? Conflict International has the knowledge and relationships to jump in for you. We compensate investigators for referring cases to our office. Contact us today for details. Conflict International uses insight, intelligence, investigation, risk management, and strategic solutions to solve problems troubling individuals and companies of all kinds anywhere around the world. Whether you're planning to hire a person to a position of trust, carry out due diligence on a company, trace hidden assets, or require skilled boots on the ground, Conflict International investigators can seamlessly pursue a case across borders, offering a truly global solution. Find out about our extensive range of services at conflictinternational.com. Conflict International, global reach, international knowledge. Welcome to PI Perspectives. Everyone's chatting about ChatGPT, and now it's your turn. Matt welcomes tech investigator Scott Walker back to the program. The guys talk about how ChatGPT is affecting the investigative space. So please welcome Scott Walker and your host, private investigator Matt Spare. And welcome everyone to this week's episode of PI Perspectives, or sure, I should I call it uh, PI uh, Technology. <laughs> perspective PI AI perspectives PI AI great <laughs> so last time I had this guest on we were geeking out talking about the metaverse and uh everybody's talking about chat GPT now uh you can't go anywhere without hearing about it so I reached out to my buddy Scott Walker and said we got to do a podcast on this so here we are Scott Walker welcome back to the program awesome to be here Matt thank you so much for having me I love talking about this stuff so Let's just let's let's make people's heads explode as they listen yes, to this. That's what we're gonna do. And I did a little bit of research. I'm gonna read off some of my notes because I, I really did not want to sound like a complete freaking moron. So I figured let me do a little here. Um so right. chat, chat GPT. Um basically, um, and correct me if I'm wrong here, right? So it, it's basically natural language processing and machine learning together. And it, it's in the form of something called a chat bot, um, which is basically your interaction with like Siri or something like that, um, um, that that's online. And basically uh, the difference between that and like a Google search query, uh, a query is that it understands context and it gives you a relative response. And it basically allows you to have a, a human-like conversation with this chatbot as opposed to, I'm just gonna type something in and get a whole list of of queries, uh, answers to the to the questions. And I think what's interesting about it is it actually predicts, right? So there's there's mathematical algorithms in here where it's predictive as to what the next word in the sentence should be. Um, and then one other thing before before we jump into this, well, I'll say, uh, I just wanna say what GPT stands for, and then I'm gonna turn it over. I'm gonna cut you loose, dude, and we're gonna go crazy. Uh, so GPT is generative uh, pre-trained uh, transformer. So a generative mean it, it it generates a response. Pre-trained means it's pre-trained by humans. Uh, so someone actually has to teach this machine what's okay. right and what's wrong and what's you know, how to be predictive and everything like that. And transformer is basically transforming input into output. That's all I got. I'm done <laughs> <laughs> research. Uh, and the one thing I want to say: the learning, from what I understand, the program learning in there only goes up to 2021, right? Um, yeah, that's it. Yeah. I'm, I'm tapping out. I'm going to turn over to Scott. Uh, <laughs> I just uh, ate, ate a whole bunch of words. So tell me, uh, tell me if I was right, uh, right on or off. 
Nailed it. Nailed it. The uh, Wikipedia article that you read was right on. <laughs> it wasn't wiki. It was not wiki. <laughs> <laughs> Which was Wikipedia is probably being written by uh, chat GTP now, right? Probably. Um, no, right. You, you, you nailed it. Uh, the the great thing about, and you know, there, there are other models. Chat GTP just happens to be kind of the most popular now, um, you know, early on in the company's founding, you know, Elon Musk was was an investor and and uh, they're what's called open source software, open AI, if you will, mm. which means that really almost anybody can use it. So well, when we say we can use it, what does that really mean? And, and so I encourage listeners, by the way, to just Google chat GTP go to their website, sign up for their, their free um, AI. And I think their version two is free, um, but you can pay uh, to get better access to, to get, um, oh, and it's, by the way, not a ton of money. It, it's actually very reasonable um, considering what kind of information you're getting. But basically to your, your point, you, people go into a, what looks like a search bar and you chat, you, you type something. Now it's important to, uh, differentiate chat TTP from something like Google, uh, just going to Google and searching or Googling something. Mm -hmm. Chat GTP is like what you're saying, something you put information in, like write me an article about artificial intelligence and it will spit out something that is co correlating from its learning model. And, you know, we'll talk, I'll talk about learning model in a second, but because it is different than what Google does. You type in, um, write me an article about AI in Google, it's going to pull up search results right. for other websites that maybe have those terms in it. I, or have those articles done, right? So you just or have those articles. Go to yeah. read yeah, and learn about something. Written it, yeah. exactly. And and so, you know, the use cases is, is different. And then we'll talk, you know, we'll definitely get into a, how is this relevant for private investigators. Exactly. Oh man. Yeah. You have no idea. He's <laughs> <laughs> uh, But so I'll use an example um, in preparation for our discussion, Matt. I wanted to have something kind of funny for us to talk about. And so I went to chat GTP. I have an account, went to chat GTP. And I, and I wrote something in there that I, cause I was like, you know, what, what could be fun? You're, you're an East coast guy. I'm a West coast guy, but most people don't know is that I have roots in New England. So I just asked chat D GTP to write me an article. Let me find it here. Um, so I wanted an article that uh, was a fake story news article about Tom Brady coming out of retirement to rejoin the Patriots for one day before retiring again. Oh, and that's literally the only thing I put in the chat DTP, right? So here's the headline that the AI spit out in milliseconds. It immediately started. Right. So the headline is from chat GTP, Tom Brady's one day return to Patriots end in retirement, leaving fans with bewilderment and memories. That's what the AI created title. off of my, hey, you know, right? Something about Tom Brady, the right? editor would never go for that. It's too long. <laughs> <laughs> no. And by the way, this hasn't happened. Right. So then I said, well, write me a story, a news story based on, on this headline. And so I'll just read the, a couple of sentences because I think it was really funny. Um, like how, what, by the way, it wrote me, uh, I don't know, nine or 10 paragraphs here. Right. And um, it, there's some interesting points here. I'm not going to read all of it, obviously, but it actually described the game. The last game, which happened, they, it picked the New York Jets as the last game that Tom Brady played at uh, for win. the Patriots. That's probably why. <laughs> it's probably a win. <laughs> I, it may not be a surprise to you that the Jets lost. I'm just Of course. <laughs> so, <laughs> but it did describe the game. And by the way, Tom Brady didn't throw the winning super or winning a, a, a pass to win the game. It, it came down to a kick. They won by one point. So it was a close game, good game. Um, but anyways, it just goes on to describe this, but it says, um, in a stunning turn of events, legendary quarterback Tom Brady came out of retirement to join the New England pa Patriots for one final game before retiring once again. Fans were left shocked and, emo and emotional as they witnessed the return of one of the greatest football players in NFL history to the team he led to six 
Super Bowl victories. So um, automatically, you know, there there's some, some challenges there uh, with uh, the amount of Super Bowls that he's won, seven Super Bowls, and uh, he's been nine times to super to the Super Bowl, right? But interestingly enough, it pulled all this data, just co- it correlates it from its learning model, right. and then spits out an answer to something that is completely fictitious and not happened, right? So the interesting thing I think with that with that with with doing that is w- where is it getting this this information? And to your you you had mentioned earlier, and this is in uh, one of the kind of the risk categories that I that I have um, in my notes is if you if it, the the learning model really depends on the human when they're inputting this data where or where are they getting where are they correlating this data and it's actually called third party data so you know we you know if you ask me um, to influence an ai maybe i go to my facebook or my linkedin and i give it that information to put in there all the comments that i've ever made and those kinds of things well, that's not a really efficient way to to create this big learning model. You want as much data as possible. So where do you get the data? Well, you purchase it from a third party who purchases it from Facebook or wherever. Right. So our learning models are created from vast amounts of data. Some of that data is wrong, <laughs> right? Or prejudice in a certain way. I mean, we've, we've all seen the news articles about AI, uh, you know, 2018, in fact, uh, Amazon was using an AI model to look at resumes, and it found and this. They studied this to see over time how is it affecting, and it chose less women than it did men. So it it had an unconscious bias in there. So right. there was some amount of data that was was influencing it one way to pick male candidates over female candidates. Incredible, right? You know, it's uh, it's a very interesting little nugget of, uh, of info there. Right. So it yeah. was, was it the programmers that were <laughs> the misogynists or <laughs> yeah. Or the data, the you know, data. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it right now anyways, uh, we'll get into kind of where we're going here, but I'll give you a little sneak peek. Uh, co- AI is writing its own code. Mm. So when we talk about singularity and, and AI becoming sentient or aware, you know, what does that mean? And I th- we're going to have to define it in this lifetime. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, as of right now, they say that it's not right. It's only as good as, as what you're programmed in. A not even a baby. Yeah. Only not even a baby. 2021 too. Right. So there's two years right. worth of stuff that happened that, that you're not going to uh, get out of this, but yeah, right. it, 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 it's it's a question that, that bears asking, right? So how long before, uh, you know, uh, we're sending people back from the future to go? <laughs> yeah. Daughter, right? <laughs> kill kill, uh, kill the, the, the overlord or the person who creates the overlord. Yeah. And yeah, there's a whole movie series on that. <laughs> exactly. I, saw, I remember something about it, seeing something somewhere. Uh, but the, the interesting thing here, too, is like, there's a lot of terms that that are coming out, and AI is is just one of the terms that that we're now throwing around a lot because there's a ton of focus on it in the media, and there's there's people on on kind of both sides of the aisle, not politically, but both sides of like AI is dangerous, and then there's the the maybe the more scientific folks who are like, no, it, it can be used for good, and, and I didn't know anything about any of this until I landed in Silicon Valley working for a tech company as their investigations leader. And uh, our CEO, I thought we were a gaming company. I had no idea. I was an idiot. And so my our CEO, literally the first all hands that I went to, I'd been there maybe a month. And he said, AI, machine learning, artificial intelligence, you know, self-driving. And I was like, my head exploded. Wait, what? I thought we made video games. What are, what are we talking about? This is I was so... Games, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What? <laughs> Oops. Rockstar is a, a client of theirs, right? But, um, you know, the main product that we made were GPUs and GPUs ran um, all of this machine learning. And uh, so, you know, I think as investigators, we're really going to be at the forefront of trying to understand this intersection of analog and digital. Sure. And, uh, you know, I always talk about this, what is 
virtual or what is what is digital will become kinetic. Mm -hmm. You know, um, great if you if people uh, can want want to get on YouTube and watch kind of a disturbing dystopian view of both robotics, drones, and artificial intelligence in in conjunction with object detection or facial recognition. Mm -hmm. I highly encourage people to watch the video on YouTube. It's a short one, maybe 15 minutes, called Slaughterbots. Um, slaughter, like slaughtering cattle, bots, all mm -hmm. one word. And I, it's several years old now, but it has a really interesting view of how you, they use drone technology to um, and, and facial recognition. Yeah. And I think that's th those are all things that we should be really concerned about. 100%. How our organizations or governments going to use this? Us as investigators, we use it. Right. You know, if we some of our uh, some of your listeners are from Las Vegas, casinos are absolutely using facial recognition right now oh, yeah. to find I mean, the cheaters and kick hot, them out. Hot, hot topic here in New York. You know, Madison yeah, Madison Garden uh, gotten some hot water for throwing out attorneys that were that's suing, right. You know, and. Uh, and then they hired a, a the garden hired a private investigator to file follow around the investigator for the the licensing state licensing liquor of, of your let's get a whole big thing back and forth and like being the president of my state associations i'm getting phone calls like hey this pi that was following around the uh the liquor authority guys he a member of our association because if we had to distance ourselves or, or make a comment about this if if he's a member, I was like, he's not a member. <laughs> you know, like we're good. Um, good that's so, a good thing to know too. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 crazy. I thought you were going to talk about uh, watching the Matrix, <laughs> like talking about drones and facial recognition and, and all that. Like I thought that's where you were going. That um, was our metaverse discussion, but yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot of that. Yeah. Right. Where's Neo? Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, there's so much to unpack here, and and really, you know. Uh, it, it, if we haven't lulled people to sleep with our tech talk here, um, you know, there, there is purpose to this conversation and we're, we're going to talk about it, how it relates to the investigator and what we need to look for. How can we capitalize as um, investigators in this space and understanding, um, you know, where the future is for us to uh, do investigative work or, or maybe sell ourselves or, or just be in front of it. I know uh, right now with attorneys, I mean, every CE that's out there, somebody's talking about chat GPT. Let's, let's talk about this, you know, uh, because it, it is weaving itself into everything, right? Um, when you start having um, evidence for, for cases. Um, Check out the PI and whatnot and, and being able to authenticate, uh, is it relevant or is it something that's generated? Um, oh, yeah you know, it is something that, that, um, you know, we're just touching the tip of the iceberg and this is a good spot what? to take a break. So <laughs> I think we're going to take a break. And when we come back, I want to dive into that. Cause I know you got, you got a comment. In fact, I'm going to give you a little bit. Let's, let's give a little, let's give a comment here before we go out to uh short blurb. Short, Cause short you want to come back. <laughs> yeah. AI will disrupt the legal industry significantly. Okay. There we go. Sit tight, everybody. We'll be right back after these words. Check out the PI Institute of Education at PIinstitute.com. Since 1989, Kelly Riddle has been teaching on subjects such as surveillance, nursing home investigations, insurance fraud, domestic investigations, hidden assets, and accident scene investigations. The PI Institute of Education is a featured learning partner in the investigatorstoolbox.com. So check out the free content on the site, then visit the Institute for more great savings on additional classes. Are you an investigator that can find the time for research or are you stuck on a case that's given you issues? Satellite Investigations has a dedicated research team that specializes in skip tracing and defendant locates. Let our expert researchers use a balanced technique of research and pretext know-how to authenticate data and get you the answers you need. Contact us today by emailing at newcase at satellitepi.com. Do you enjoy our podcast and the guests we bring you? Since 2019, Matt and his team have done their very best to give you amazing shows each week. If you feel like our show has helped you to be a better investigator, or maybe even inspired you to become an investigator, please let us know. We're looking for testimonials. 
drop Matt an email with a recorded 20 to 30 seconds of you talking about this podcast. You can also email him something verbal about the website. His email is S at SatellitePI.com. And if you really feel blessed for having this content, consider supporting Matt and our show by joining Investigators Toolbox. You really have to see version 2.0. And at just 49 cents a day, it's a no-brainer. Now let's jump in to this week's episode. And welcome back to PI Perspectives. This is Matt Sperry, your host. Uh, we're here with uh, Scott Walker. Scott, welcome back to the program. Uh, Thanks, man. Before we took a break, we had, there was a cliffhanger. We we're talking about disruption of the legal community. Uh, so let's yeah. uh, let's just jump right in, man. Uh, yeah, I think there's a lot of, uh, well, so we talked about AI disrupting um, a lot of jobs, right? And that's kind of the the big thing that uh, the news media is is talking about and trying to make people more concerned about. Um, I'm not as concerned about it. Uh, technology has always disrupt industry. Uh, but I think specifically for us, we work in the legal industry. Um, so specifically two points to that. I think that uh, lawyers will be incredibly disruptor, uh, disrupted by artificial intelligence. We'll get more into that. And I think they're the people that assist them. So paralegals and things like that. Yeah. Uh, more than likely, we'll also see uh, significant disruption. But let's talk about our private investigators and mm -hmm. or just detectives in general. Uh, sure. I'll keep it broad for our, for our law enforcement partners too. That's going to be incredibly disruptive because our ability to and that's not, that's less about artificial intelligence and more about machine le learning and object detection or or what's called computer vision. Uh, so if you if you Think about like, uh, how does a Tesla self-drive? Um, sometimes not very well, but uh, it, it's using computer vision uh, and they don't use uh, LIDAR or something like that, laser detection, range finding. Um, Toyota uses that technology, but Tesla does not. Tesla is using cameras and looking and identifying objects like trucks and persons and somebody on a bike or a traffic cone, things like that. And so... So specifically with detectives, I think there's so much technology that is out there that is uh, computer vision related. So think about your ring doorbell. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we apply artificial intelligence um, facial recognition on the back end of that, somebody who breaks into your car in your driveway, are you going to need to hire a private detective to identify them? Or did you capture it with your 13 ring cameras that are around your house? Right. And well, now you your have your Tesla that's sitting in the driveway. Well, your Tesla is sitting <laughs> in the driveway. Yeah. Yeah. So I just so, had a conversation yesterday with one of my field investigators who does a lot of my reconstruction work. He goes, Hey, man, I think we should buy the cables for Tesla uh, and the software package to download the info off their cameras. He's like, There's lots of Teslas out there. And, you know, making the investment in the equipment, it's about 1500 bucks. Right. But, you know, he's like, it's probably worth it because we're seeing more and more Teslas involved in this stuff. I was like, I don't hate that idea. <laughs> Let's talk further about it. So, yeah, man, you're seeing it all over the place. I, uh, I'm a, I'm a, I own a Tesla, so I absolutely love the surveillance that I uh, have capability to do. Uh, just a, a piece on that because it's super easy. I don't know that you need to buy anything. So if you're using or if you want to acquire um, evidence that was the video evidence mm -hmm. uh, from the, there's, um, by the way, five cameras on a Tesla. The owner or the, the person who has the vehicle can access one, two, three, four, five. Uh, yeah, five cameras, I believe. The front, back, the two side repeaters, and the interior camera. Interior camera can be accessed when the vehicle's not moving. It all records onto a, a thumb drive if the owner has it plugged in and formatted correctly. That's a big if. Big if. So who's doing that? Just subpoena it or get their cooperation or subpoena those records. Boom. You've got actually it's a dot MOV file. Mm -hmm. Super easy to use. Um, and it comes right out of the um the hard drive that's attached to the vehicle. Same thing for traffic collision investigations. If Perfect. you can if you have a right to that that data, you can get it. Um I, but I agree if you're going to get all the, there's tons more sensors, by the way, yeah. um, it, around the car. So uh, getting the cabling for that, great idea. 
Absolutely yeah. agree. And by the way, not just Tesla, there's a, a ton of other cars. Yeah, um, Ford has a Ford front camera that's like on the mounted on the, the grill of the car. Anyways. Yeah. But all my this stuff is my car's got tons of them all over there too. I mean, yeah, oh, it, yeah. It, I mean, it's great, but all, this is the environment we're in. Sure. So, you know, as you, as we're, we detectives are canvassing in a neighborhood, we're looking for the ring cameras and the surveillance mm -hmm. cameras and the vehicles that have in, onboard cameras that are recording. Um, so just knowing that um, that cuts down our time as detectives, but it also means that I don't maybe need as many detectives to do a thing. Right. right. So I think that will impact us. I think we're still going to be needed in, in the future. Yeah. It's, it's better, but, yeah, but not so, at the same level. So we're, we're, we're in the risk portion of, of uh, basically yeah. what we're talking about here. Are, are there any other risks or any other things that you could think about, um, you know, with, with, let's say specifically chat GPT, you know, we start talking yeah. about like fraud issues and, and, you know, the, the obvious, you know, deep fakes involved with that. The um, biggest thing that I'm concerned about is deep fakes. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk about what that means and deep fakes uh, disrupting our way of life and our government. Mm -hmm. So a deep fake, it can be a picture, it can be a video, um, it could be audio. Mm -hmm. And what, what they do is through artificial intelligence and through technology, you're capturing or you're creating an image or an, a, a voice likeness of somebody and it can be just about anybody now they only need about three seconds of a voice print um, and maybe their image and they can create video still pictures and uh, audio of that person mm -hmm. uh, this in your backyard was really big because there were a bunch of pictures that were created by artificial intelligence of trump running from the police or getting yeah. <laughs> you know mobbed in new york when he was uh, there for his hearing you know, the, and, the uh, president of Ukraine doing cocaine, you know, it's yeah, yeah, there's, there's another one right now with Gates and Trump, um, if they were poor in the slums and, and dressed like they would be in the slums. So um, people are, are, are putting this information out there. And without additional tools that we'll talk about, uh, these things go viral and, and go uh, get around the world before anybody can go, wait, 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 was that authentic? Mm -hmm. Is that real? Uh, major news networks are picking these things up and going, you know, this is what we're seeing or this is what, and that only hurts the situation because, you know, I look for attribution. Who, who actually captured that video on their phone or whatever on CCTV and where did that come from? That's us as investigators. That's why you know, it's going to be hard to disrupt us too much. Yeah. Is somebody still going to ask that question? Sure. And then when you find the actual information, somebody's got to put it through a process so it can be validated. And that's where I think we will 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 be dominant, or we can remain dominant and relevant in this in this situation. Court yeah. is not going to go away. Yeah, I mean, you you the worry that I would have is just the bogging down of everything, right? And so now, right. like, so much of this stuff has to be authenticated you know it used to be like well my eyes don't lie well actually they do now <laughs> you know they like, do yeah you know you, you you can't say you know it's like the people joke around well it's on the internet it must be true right that's right that's right <laughs> you know but and, and we've known that for a long time it's like where did you read this on the internet now we everything's on the internet there okay. and this is the the evolution of of our of our our industry and our profession it, we can never stop evolving there are very few cases that I work nowadays that don't have some technology component, whether it be email or photographs or video or something. And we need to know how to, how to correlate that information. We need to know how to make sure it's authentic. Right. And I've, I've many times have been sent, hey, this video uh, is what I captured of the situation. Like, okay, well, I need to authenticate that. Where'd you get it? Oh, I just got it you know, from, from the internet or whatever. And it's like, okay, well, can you give me a link to where you got it from so that I can go and start Old going hip hop. The <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I think that's where we're going to um, be really, really needed, as well as with facial recognition. That's a that's another thing. Um, there are when you create a deep fake, there are 
um, aspects, eyes are really, eyes and hands apparently are really hard for AI to regenerate well. Six and years, right? yeah, I've seen that. A lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or, you know, the hands are a slightly different color and things like that. So when we're looking at, um, you know, specifically imagery, uh, using facial recognition technology, and there is some free stuff out there. There's also a lot of paid stuff, um, but the, the free stuff uh, or, or cheap stuff that we can use, use it, you know, and see what happens, see what kind well, of results. Let's talk about that, man. Let's talk about some of the tools that an investigator can use to yeah. um, identify deep fakes or, or, you know, false, uh, false info that's out on the internet. The, I was just using one um, because working in an investigation where somebody is uh, um, purporting to be someone that they're not. And this is, you know, kind of goes to a little bit of chat GTP uh, before we started recording, we were talking about how people will use um, uh, resumes or they'll have a, you know, AI create a resume saying that they have all these certifications or this experience that they don't have. Um, well, this is a similar situation. Somebody is, is putting, we think, photoshopping himself into pictures to uh, make claims that are untrue. Right. And um, so I used um, a, an app or a, a website called Forensically. Um, and we can put it in the show notes and I can give you the link to that. Um, but it's basically photo forensics and it, you upload the picture and we'll talk about the dangers of that here or the, the challenges or concerns that I have with that. But you basically upload a picture and then you can use a bunch of different tools to change the way the picture looks and look at the, the, um, the darker darks and the, the whiter whites and the pixels and all those kinds of things. Because usually when you're, if you're cutting out a face and putting it just in a picture, there's some residue or there's nothing is, is absolutely perfect. So you can use a bunch of tools and forensically to, to kind of identify what um, di diversions um, may have occurred. An another funny one, which is this same case, person um, used a picture of a, of a, a known person. Um, it was, it happened to be um, um, you know, a celebrity and he changed the picture by, it was a color picture and he made it black and white. So uh, the picture was a little blurry. And so he was trying to claim, well, that's me doing what that person was doing. And uh, we, we took that picture and then now we, not that it was a fake picture because it had only been turned black and white from color, but we ran that through Google images and Google Images, or maybe it was Yandex, I can't remember. I use them so much, yeah, those uh, are the both of them. Yep. Yep. Yeah, they, Google Lens is another great one. Mm -hmm. um, they turn out basically the same pictures. And uh, not only did I find the actual picture that this person took it from and, and what website, but I ended up finding video of the, this, the situation wh where the uh, person was actually captured. So it gave me not just you know, and I think it was Yandex, um, yandex.com, Russian website. Don't sign up for it, but just use it. Use it uh, <laughs> yeah, you can trust the Russians, I'm sure. Yeah, no problem. Um, so you, you, it, it's showing me, hey, this is the picture where it came from. And then here's the video that it came from. Uh, so it was really cool to see that. Um, but let me just talk really quickly about when you're uploading kind of the stuff to the internet, just be aware that you have no control. Once it's gone, it's gone. Mm -hmm. And the, and whoever you're uploading it to, they're going to use it however they're going to use it. Yeah. Um, and so those are the free tools or freemium tools. Um, maybe you, if you pay a little bit, you can get more access. What, yeah. Another one that's like that is um, uh, facecheck.id. Mm -hmm. uh, facecheck, all one word. And it does um, uh, image recognition for facial recognition and it'll spit out, uh, you know, this is where these are the websites that we think we found it at. If you want the website access or want us to give you the website, you got to pay, you know, a nominal fee, whatever. Um, and, you know, you can have a subscription there and, and, and do more with that. And you get like a limited amount of things that you can search, but there's no guarantees. Once you are uploading those videos or pictures, you know, it, if that's something that's sensitive, um, for example, we've got to be really careful as investigators. It should be, I shouldn't even have to say it, but child exploited imagery, 
-hmm. You know, if you're working on an investigation that is involving that, be really careful what you're doing. Obviously, if you are in possession of something that is CEI, um, you better let law enforcement know and don't want to go down that rabbit hole. But if you're, you're using doing research. Younger... You, you and Pete Townsend. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Just to yeah. be curious. Yeah. Yeah. But this is, these are the concerns, right? Because the government hasn't really ramped up the laws. The laws are still written from the 1980s or 90s or even older than that. Um, I think the Computer uh, Hacking Act, uh, the federal one, was written like the 60s or 70s. Like, come on, can we make it newer? So you want to so, play a game of chess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I just say be careful what you're uploading, if especially if it's a, a juvenile's image, yes, um, because you have no control where it's going from there. And, and by the way, a lot of these sites, who knows who's funding them, or mm. if they are sitting on a server in China or Russia, you know, um, I use these things uh, to, to identify bad guys. Well, so, so you you want to talk about more risk of this stuff, right? So, espionage, right? Yeah, just disruption, right? You, you have countries that are allegedly disrupting elections. You know, what better way to do that than using AI and 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 uh, you know, just throwing a narrative out there um that that it's just so overwhelming it's, it's hard to stay on top of all this you know i'll give you the the most recent example the kid who just got arrested the young uh, air national guard member who leaked two years ago by the way on a discord server who leaked this document about uh the ukraine war and it, i've seen um the the document uh you know i tend to believe what potus is saying is like okay that was two year two year old information Right. But what happened was <laughs> Russia got a hold of this image and they changed the st statistics on there. Were, there were kind of like um, uh, KIA rates, uh, killed in action rates on uh, the, the slide. And so Russia took it, changed it so that it was very pro Russia, like Russia had really low kill rates and, and Ukraine had really high kill rates. They just perverted it and are putting it all over their media look what the americans are letting out and they're trying to you know all this and that well and that's the problem to your point when when this stuff is out there who knows who's getting it and who who knows how they're going to use it to manipulate uh the facts of a situation right so let, let's shift here a little bit and let's talk about you know good uses uh for investigators and how we can capitalize on this this trend and, um, you know, be obviously being knowledgeable about it is, is that's half the battle right there. Right. Um, and, uh, you know, what types of best practices can you put forward to, you know, take it to the next level with the type of services that you're offering? Yeah. Yeah. Good uses for AI will be a short conversation because there aren't any. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, oh, so. Thanks just for joining kidding. in folks. We'll see you next yeah, time. Thanks. <laughs> see you next time. Um, yeah, it would be a real short conversation. You know, look, I think a good, good, um, hopefully outweighs the bad in all circumstances. But the thing I love about being a private investigator is that we're the arbiters of truth, right? And so we get called when that attorney is like, I don't know where to turn. I just want to know what's real and what's not. What are the facts? Right. And then we go out and we find those witnesses that can provide us the information that is truthful um, and can, can support our case. So when I, I think attribution is probably my biggest concern and AI can be used for that for every, every bad use of AI, there's a good use of AI. We can use the to AI tools to detect deep fakes. Right. And then we can go into court and say, this is the tool I used and this is how it's been used. And, and this is, if this hasn't already happened uh, and I, I apologize for not knowing any case law that is involved in this, but it will happen. And, and your listeners are going to be the ones that are going to go into court and they're going to say, no, I looked on, on Google Lens and Google Lens provided the correct, uh, the attribution to the right picture or the right video, whatever it is. So I think we, or I know we can use AI the same way the bad actors, the bad guys are using AI to pervert information. We can use it to identify that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, definitely interesting, like, uh, you know, just taking something that's used for a particular purpose and just turning around the whole use case for it and, and trying to, trying to make good on it. 
Um, what other yeah. recommendations would you give investigators that are saying, Hey, you know, like I, I really feel like I'm, um, strong on this stuff or, or I want to be stronger on it and know more about it. And, and I have a passion towards, you know, trying to do this type of work. The great thing is that the big disruption with, um, kind of AI to some extent, but I think, you know, the, the way we, we are continuing to learn is there are all, all kinds of great classes out there now because AI is a big thing and everyone wants to talk about it, but there are all kinds of free classes out there from like Stanford and Harvard and all these, you know, extensions. Uh, I, I like learning from the researchers. Now I understand when, when I read a research paper, I understand maybe 10%. Right. But you know, there oh, stop a lot of you. and you know it's really like three <laughs> percent. Yeah, <laughs> stop it. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Uh, but you know, if you you can start uh, understanding the vocabulary, and we can start understanding use cases uh, through our own imagination and our own experience, because we have all experienced the horrible things that humans do to each other. Right, and this is an extension of that. But I think just to continue to be relevant, you know, and we talked about demographics and not to dig in too much to demographics and, and, and how that is affecting our industry in five years, there will be a lot less of our investigators out there because our, the, the baby boomer generation that were, you know, gumshoe PIs are retiring in mass 10,000 a day, right? So over the next uh, few years, they will be retired. What does that leave with us? Well, Gen X and uh, millennial investigators and millennial investigators are on this. They understand it. They get it. They're team players. Um, there's more of them than there are of Gen X. Gen X, we, we know what a phone book is. Well, you know what they're so doing? We they're, understand. they're using chat GPT to make their CVs. <laughs> That's what they're doing. <laughs> or, or writing their reports. Why there wouldn't you go. use chat GTP to write a report? Right? Uh, <laughs> you right know? <laughs> Yeah, and we should be using our our uh, series or you know to to manage our cases as much as possible. Right. You know, eventually the AI will get so good that as you're doing your investigation, it's pulling information out of what you're doing and it's adding to your report. And then you'll go and finalize the report. You'll go read it for make sure that everything's good to go. Yeah. But that's that's our, that's not a a long way off either. Right. So two years, I think will be in a in a way different place than we are today um, with understanding uh, how to use this information. Another kind of big thing that, that we as investigators should be trying to understand is big data. Mm -hmm. So with all these data breaches right now, the bad actors that are doing these data breaches don't understand the value of the data that they have, but with machine learning, they will. So there's an undercurrent of risk here that is coming that we really don't even know what, what is out there and what people are, or what these bad actors are going to find out about us and, and those of us who've been involved in data breaches. So if you're offering services to, you know, corporations and, and uh, organizations that have big data and have been breached, the value of that data is not yet known. But with machine learning, it will be. Yeah. I mean, think about pen testing with AI. I mean, yeah. really start being predictive and 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 you're finding those loopholes. Um, and protect ourselves too. Yeah. We yeah. have all kinds of customer data. Yeah. Better protect it behind, you know, something more than just a password. I feel like that's a tool that could probably help that side of the industry, but could also probably hurt that side of the industry saying, hey, we don't need you guys. We got... We got predictive AI that's telling us where our our uh, issues are. So predictive policing is is already a thing. LAPD uh, did that, I think, last decade uh, in the 2010s, and they were using something called um, Pred Poll, mm. and it's a it's an AI that generates um, kind of heat maps for crime, and then policing goes in and focuses their policing activities on the crime. Oh, okay. So, you know, we're, we're using big data or companies are using big data, like arrest records and criminal activity to say, Hey, police, this is where you need to patrol. But now think about that in the private sector. How would we use that in a, maybe a risk assessment for a customer who says, Hey, I want to, I want to open a factory in this part of town. You know, what do, what do we think about that? 
And uh, I mean, we do that now, right. but it's really almost always post purchase of a location and that there's a, there's a facility already there and it's getting broken into all the time. Why is that happening? Oh, well, you were in a really bad neighborhood and, right. and people, you know, you don't have any cameras or any lights, like, come on, don't be stupid. Um, so yeah, I, I just think that you're, you're absolutely right. Uh, and it kind of more feels more a, we're seeing a little bit like minority report, right? It's just kind yeah, of, yeah, yeah, yeah. Great one. It's coming yeah. to fruition here. <laughs> yeah. As long as they're not like three ladies that are telling the future, I think we're okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, that are actually psychics. Yeah, yeah. there's really no <laughs> technology behind it. Like yeah. if that comes comes about, then we're screwed. We're right? <laughs> we're done. <laughs> well, spe speaking of that, you know, so I think we're going to see. Obvi obviously, we've already seen AI helping people make decisions. But eventually we'll see that in the courtroom too. So maybe you have 12 jurors and, and an AI application that's providing them or helping them clarify difficult to understand cases. Yeah. And hey, listen, now, uh, the, the, the pattern jury instructions, right? If, if you had machine learning that said, these are the pattern jury instructions, these are the yeah. criteria that you have to meet. And if you meet them, summary judgment, right? So yeah. it's, you're probably right. It's not far off, right? No. If you can no, have some sort of assisted, you know, uh, deliberation, right? And it will be call, as I'm comfortable as today. Siri. I'm calling it, it today. Are, yeah, <laughs> assisted I, deliberation. I, I think you're probably. absolutely right. Yeah, yeah. Trademark this. What? Time, time stamp it. You heard it here, folks. <laughs> <laughs> This is not yeah, my minority I, report. <laughs> people are so comfortable with the series and Alexa's. That, yeah. Did it turn on? When I said Alexa, no, yeah, there you go. Uh, there's, <laughs> we're all so uh, comfortable when we say those terms and we expect a response now, you know, like give me the directions, give me the information. And that's really preconditioned this generation of, that we're all in right. to when, when our AI overlords are telling us, yeah, that's guilty. You should vote guilty. There's predominance right. of evidence to 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 uh, vote guilty on. I mean, look, this is going to be our challenge. Yeah, I mean, the danger of you know, okay, you, you quote unquote overlord. What happens when the overlord is corrupted? Right. That's it. We that, just that, talked about that. Yeah. That, you know that data that is is not trustworthy. That's in there. You know, and uh, so let's talk about that too. So, Chat GPT. I read an article recently where they had uh they were reporting on a, a some sort of incident took place i don't know if it was a a crime it was some sort of crime or or something like that where the person who uh caused the uh, or the or kept the incident from happening like chat gpt wrote it as that person being responsible or causing the incident to happen it yeah. was the complete opposite and it was like here you go you know this is the beginning of errors right it's machine learning was not perfect right it, it it's only as perfect as the data that was entered into it and if that's faulty then there's the problem right so it's not gospel right, right? no no it, it definitely isn't and, and i think that's where this your knowledge piece comes in that you mentioned uh, that's so important for investigators to to you know you don't have to be an ai researcher as a private investigator but we really should understand our tools and, and the techniques that that folks are using how does business use this you know if you if your your practice as a private investigator is focused on on supporting businesses you know how, how are they using it we, you talked about um you know per, perhaps using uh, um some of the the imagery collected from vehicles you know if you you work for insurance companies how is that going to change i actually think insurance is going to insurance investigations are being incredibly disrupted because you, the mini a lot of our cars have cellular chips in them the Internet minute you're things, in man. it, it is iot change everything yeah you yeah. know oh, how by the way you know, like we should be really concerned about iot and where it's being made because while uh, POTUS just signed uh, earlier this year, last year, the CHIP Act, restricting the amount of technology that China can get to manufacture high-end chips. They're not making GPUs anymore. They're not able to manufacture stuff that's going to go into a rocket or a fighter jet or something. You know, they're creating IoT stuff. So you imagine they were out there making you know higher-end chips um, with technology that they did not design. It was designed in, in Korea and in Taiwan and given to China. And, and 
that's how they're making stuff. They don't have the intrinsic knowledge. So you, now you flash forward to the chip act comes out. You can't buy that stuff from China anymore. So what are they going to do? They're going to shift to what they know, which is to manufacture cheaper stuff. So all the stuff, all the sensors that are either in your car or on your house or in your house are going to be made from China because we're at kind of this, this technology war with China. Are they building in back doors where they can control those things? I don't know yet. I think it's, yeah, it's possible. Absolutely. Um, All of a sudden, so it's death to America and everything shuts off. <laughs> yeah, know? everything shuts Well, I mean, that's the goal, right? Like if we just think about if you could not uh, use your phone for days, what would you do, right? How would you get in your house? How would you start your car? How would you communicate with your friends to make to let them know you're okay? How would you communicate with your kids? Right. You know, and I, I, I can hear your listeners already. Well, I drive a, a 1975 Ford pickup. Okay, cool. Cool story. You're going to be the only one. Exactly. <laughs> and good luck getting like, gas for that. Cause the pump doesn't work. <laughs> the pump uh, the pump's going to shut off. Yeah. I mean, it, it's uh, not to get too crazy down the dystopian hole. I think um, a lot of IOT is going to be disruptive uh, to what we do as investigators, you know, insurance investigators, the cars are going to immediately, they immediately sense already through OnStar. That's a, a, a great service. Hey, right. there's been an accident. Um, your phone, if you have an Apple phone, it, it, it uh, senses the deceler quick deceleration and says, were you in a crash? I'm calling 911 yep. until you can tell me not to. So that all now will evolve into, I've uh, filed the insurance claim because we sensed that the front bumper was damaged to 25%. And um, we filed the claim already. Done. It's handled. It's, oh, and when, it, when a that, claim you know, is done, there's somebody, no investigation. On, on the other side, right? You've, I've got a back injury or you know, I get a knee injury and I can't run. Well, yeah. you know, your, 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 your smart watch says your heart rate was, you know, uh, 145. Uh, you want to explain yeah. you know, how... Oh, your heart rate got that high, you know, like that kind your, of stuff. Your technology's dropping a dime yeah. on you. <laughs> or, or you get like this is the other thing they tell investigators all the time, like don't use your personal phone to to gather evidence for cases because you know you get these blanketed subpoenas where they're like they want your phone. No, we don't want the data on your phone. We want your actual phone, right? So it's actual like, phone. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, <laughs> like you know, it, it's it's just changing everything. But uh, I yeah. think we're, we're starting to go down a, a rabbit hole. Uh, on other things and i, I want to put a bow on it right here because uh this right. is a great chat man it really um uh, it opens a lot of doors and asks a lot of questions and scott you're always a great guest to, to talk about this stuff and Thanks. uh um you know this is the future folks it's it's you know those of us who understand how to be out in the field and do you know the hard skills but but understand these these soft skills also uh, being behind a computer and and just understanding technology and, and, and um, terms and stuff like that. Like you got to stay on top of all this stuff because uh, you, nobody's waiting for you. <laughs> Time marches on, right? That's right. Um, any uh, parting thoughts here, buddy? I, I want to really support what you're saying about continuing your knowledge and education. Nobody should be afraid of this. We, we, we weren't afraid of the computer when it came out that it would replace our typewriters. And yes, I'm, I'm a Gen X or I understand what a typewriter is and typing and wrote papers. Keyboards, it's, yeah. It's really different, you know. Yeah. The, everything's different about what we do, but just like, you know, go back a hundred years, the cotton gin came out, uh, um, uh, multi-phase manufacturing with Ford, Ford built the, the first automobile on an assembly line, you know, like that, those kinds of things, um, will change how we do what we do, right. uh, but we are still valued. We just have to get smarter about the technology that we're using. And I'm not suggesting you got to go back to school and get a master's degree in something because the way we learn is also going to be disruptive and already has been disruptive. Mm -hmm. uh, you can go on YouTube. I, mean, I think we've talked about this before. You can go on YouTube and start learning about this stuff. Oh what, I, what I caution people is, look for attribution, look for something that has some level of value. You know, what does that mean to you? You know, in, in the Fox News, CNN debate, uh, you know, who's more trustworthy? 
you know, I can't answer that for Please anybody. Don't go down that road. <laughs> Please. No, no. I, you, we all got to figure it out for ourselves. Yeah, what do you exactly. trust? How do you trust it? Why do you trust it? And it, but this is a great thing. Investigators, we get it. You know, we understand like, oh, I, I, I shouldn't just go find the 80 year old witness who has cataracts and she can only see like 15 feet. That's not a good ideal witness. I got to keep looking. Right. And same thing with, with attribution on these, these, any information you're seeing online, we just need to, to try and assure who's telling us the truth. What are they telling us? How are they telling us? Yeah. You know, don't, don't believe everything, you know, this, we learned, I learned early on as a cop, I don't believe anything I hear and only half of what I see. Yeah. Same thing applies today. We can't stop doing that. So keep asking questions, keep being great investigators. Like I know your listeners are. Yeah. I mean, it's time. It's pivot time. Pivot, pivot, pivot. Right. You know, just, just keep, uh, keep, keep making sure that you're just staying informed on things and, and, uh, you know, know when to, to, to pull the trigger to, to pivot a little bit and, uh, and stay on top of things. So, all right. So we're going to, we're going to cap it here. Uh, Scott, thank you so much for coming on. Um, I, I hope everybody, <laughs> their, their brains haven't, you know, blown up <laughs> yeah. and, and all that. If they did, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> next week, we'll try do something, uh, well, you know, we'll, we'll dumb it down for next week <laughs> and take it easy. Uh, but, thanks for having me, Matt. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks everyone for checking it out and uh, we'll catch you guys next week on the next episode. Take care. This was a fun show for the ages. Is your mind spinning? I'm sure it is, like mine. Talk about information overload. Scott's always a great guest, so thank you for hopping on again. And thanks to Campbell Insurance Group for sponsoring the show. Remember to tell them you listen to the show so you can save $50 when you apply for insurance. And thank you also to the PI Institute for Education, Conflict International, and Satellite Investigations for sponsoring our show. Make sure you contact Satellite if you need help with any skip tracing needs. Also, don't forget about investigatorstoolbox.com. You can save 50 bucks when you type in version 2.0, 25%. If you have a question or a comment about the show, email Matt at Matthew S. at SatellitePI.com. You can also find them on LinkedIn, Instagram, and Facebook. We want your feedback to bring you the best shows possible. And we'll be back again next week with a new show. Make sure you tune in and stay safe out there.